Hello and welcome to my next class. I know I have not taken a few theories in my classes. So here is a quick glance for all of you of literary theories. So please, I request you all to go through these theories and the major text written by these theorists. And you will get to know what these theories are about. And you will also get to know about the major text written in these theories. So, what we'll be taking up is formalism and major text. Second, we'll take historical criticism. Third, we will take psychoanalysis. Fourth, we will take post-structuralism and deconstruction. Please don't forget that I have already taught you Marxism and structuralism. You can go through my um, videos on structuralism and Marxism too, uh, which is present in my YouTube channel. So here we begin with the very first formalism. Now formalism is based on the form and structure and style. Now the formalists here, they pay special attention on the form, structure and style of a text. That how text is being written, how things are in the text. So they are basically, they move around the form, structure and the style. And the major texts which are written under this theory are by several theorists, the several formalists that have written uh, several uh, essays and uh, theories. So let's see who are they. That is Victor Sheklovsky. He has written Art as Technique. Then we have Mikhail Bakhtin that is discourse in novel then we have yalmir prop morphology of the folk tales please don't forget these works because they are important from the point of view that while questions are given uh, in the form of matching tab ye questions pooch le jate hain that victor shaklovsky ka kaun sa hai artist technique so we should know mikhail bakhtin ka kaun sa hai discourse in novel and Yalmir Prop, Morphology of the Folk Tales, which is very important. Yalmir Prop ka Morphology of the Folk Tales. Please don't forget it. Right. Then we come to historical criticism. Now, historical criticism kya hai? It pays special emphasis on the ancient texts and its origin. So, when we talk about the historical information or about the historical criticism, then we come to know that it explains a cultural text by providing meaning for events and characters right now when we talk about history or when we go through some history then history seems to be a record of past events right or uh, like you can see that like one walking into the room that movement there was a movement right which had been uh, was full of busy life and had uh, different kinds of people and now after some movement it got emptied nobody there and as if somebody has given a command of silence now when you look through the history there would be traces of people everywhere half filled mugs pens put down letters half finished work half done so each movement that passes is a movement that has just become historical jaise jaise ye movement pass ho raha hai this also becomes historical right aisi queen kabhi rahi hongi she used to do do that so these all come under history that is ancient all right so the texts that have been written so historical criticism pays special emphasis on the ancient texts and its origin hope it is clear now is my important text kaun se hain jo likhe gaye hain please don't forget mujhe pata nahi kyun lag raha hai that tomorrow they they are going to ask about stephen greenblatt so please don't forget shakespearean negotiation this is very important right then we have raymond williams culture and society this was asked last time then we have E.P. Thompson, The Making of English Working Class, Ian Watt, bhi bahut important hai, The Rise of the Novel. So please don't forget Stephen Greenblatt. 
that is Shakespearean negotiations, Raymond Williams, Culture in Society, E.P. Thompson, he is also very important, that is the making of the English working class and Ian Watt, that is the rise of the novel. Please, we are just going through uh, and we are trying to revise literary theories, just say ki aap ekdom nil na jau, that we don't know what is historical criticism or what is formalism. So please, make yourself learn and see if you have done all these texts, right? Now, now coming to psychoanalysis. So this was all about historical criticism, moving to psychoanalysis. Now, when we go through psychoanalysis, the reading of text and analyzing it through the thought process, experience and knowledge. We all have a conscious and an unconscious mind, right? Sometimes it is conscious that we think, if something comes in front suppose there is a, a brown dog. So different people have different imaginations and different images of that particular dog or about some cat or about any animal that we are talking about. So whenever we read a text and whenever we analyze it, we analyze it with our own experience, with the thought process that we have and the knowledge that we have already acquired. So psychoanalysis, it is a mix of cognition and emotion. So we analyze a text after reading it carefully. Now there are thoughts which already hote in our mind. And some thoughts are hote hain jo unexpectedly come. So psychoanalysis is all about that. Okay, now who was the inventor of psychoanalysis is important. Sigmund Freud. Please don't uh, forget Sigmund Freud, he was an inventor of psychoanalysis. Now looking through as time is less and we want to read more and more. So let's in, uh, see the major text uh, for the following, the behind the theory of psychoanalysis that is Sigmund Freud very important. The interpretation of dreams is very important. Then we have Melanie Klein, the psychoanalysis of children and Jack Slican, that is Ekrits. So please don't forget them and we are in this particular slide we are done with formalism and major text, historical criticism and psychoanalysis. Now moving on to post-structuralism and deconstruction. Now when we talk about post-structuralism, so this particular structuralism that we have already done in our last class. So this structuralism became post-structuralism in 1967. Okay, this post-structuralism came in 1967 and it just came after Jacques Derrida's of grammatology. Please don't forget of grammatology is very important and what it deals with it deals basically with language and the system. Now here they believe that language is key and that words and sentences do not reflect or represent any external reality. So they basically deal with language and system. Basically they have emphasis on language, signification and semiotics. Right? Now, what is deconstruction? It is the relation between text and its meaning. Jo text hai aur uska meaning hai is all about deconstruction. Now, when we have a close reading of a text, jab bhi hum usko closely read karte hai text ko, tab hume uska meaning pata chalta hai and the analysis that we make. Now, we'll not go in detail because we don't have time but you need to know about each and everything. So I've made this video. Now the major works that one must remember are as follows. Nietzsche, very important. Hai. Frederick Nietzsche on truth and lying in an extra moral sense. Then we have Michael Ficault, the archaeology of knowledge. Barbara Johnson, a word of difference. 
Gian Francisco Lyotard, that is the postmodern condition. Nietzsche mat bhuliyega, Michael Foucault, he is also very important. And Gian Francois Lyotard is also very important. So these all are important uh, theorists. Uh, that they have written under these theories, under this post-structuralism and deconstruction. So don't forget. Jacques Derrida, very important of grammatology. Right? Now coming to few notes asked by my students and which is important for you all too. So you all should know it. Very first note, polemic. This question is asked. Polemic word is from... Uh, is taken from the Greek word that is polemos. और इसका ये किस Greek word से लिया गया है? Polemic word polemos से और इसका meaning क्या होता है? Battle या war. Now, Jacques Derrida ने एक ऐसे लिखा था Structure, Sign and Play in the Discourse of Human Science. ठीक है? और यहाँ पे he made a type of analysis जो it tells about uh, where, uh, which understand individual elements, every individual element of language and culture as set or you can say as embedded in larger structures. Har ek individual's element jo ki language or culture mein hai, usko aise embed kiya gaya, aise set kiya gaya hai that they form larger structures. So he explains it like that. He uh, says the word center that is used in his essay, he uh, tells about that, that why, you know, he provides the structure but fails to examine the concept of structure. And Jacques Derrida, yaha, kya batane ki koshish kar rahe? he gave an example, ki jaise hamari, uh, jo life hai, the center of human life is God and he dictate, dictates several laws. Yet, he is not a part of the life. Yes, obviously, hum log, he, to sab kar rahe hai. he dictates everything, but he is not the part. We cannot see him, right? We cannot see where God is, but. So, Jacques Derrida here tries to explain the same. So, it is a type of analysis which understands individual elements of language and culture as embedded in larger structure. So I hope it is clear and this is small effort so that before you go for your exam, you can just go through this. So all the best for your exam and I hope you all do well and please don't forget to tell how was, it, how was your exam. Thank you and see you tomorrow.